Hi everybody, I'd like to welcome you to Press Release Writing to the Sequel. So basically I want to just do a quick review of Press Release Writing. Um, since we were only able to do a very quick lecture uh, right before we all went online, I want to review this again just a little bit, give you some more tips on how to write these press releases, go over formatting one more time, and explain again what we do with this piece of paper that we create. Um, so basically, uh, we want to talk about where you might send a press release to. Again, it depends on the size of your market and the nature of your organization. Uh, look at what media you think uh, your audience uses. Um, they could be things like a newspaper, a magazine, a radio TV station, local bloggers or online news sites. So depending on who needs to hear the information you're trying to provide or you want to reach, figure out what media you need to send this to. So you're going to create a press release or information about your company, your business, your um, nonprofit, and get it out to specific media to make sure your audience sees hears or reads about your event. So knowing when to use a press release is just as important as knowing how to use a press release. So basically I want to show a couple of scenarios where uh, a news release is kind of important for your company or your business. And then we're going to go into um, near the end um, a little lecture about news values, what the media cares about, um, when you're writing these releases. So you know that your release meets the um, needs of what's important to a media to publish. So it could be the development of a new product or a service that your company is offering. It could be a breakthrough in research or development, um, important new hire or a move in upper management. It could be a special event happening within the next few months or a significant recognition or accolade from an outside agency or organization, or something that's different or change in your business operations. So again, like it could be something new that your company's providing, a new product or a new service that you're offering. You might have a new cure for something or, or a new breakthrough for a, um, a medication you supply. Uh, you might have hired a new CEO or president and they've moved an upper or somebody uh, when your VPs or somebody from below moved up to an, an upper position. Uh, it could be an open house coming in the next couple of months or uh, an event like that or a, an anniversary. You might have won an award for being the best of or a reader's choice award or your company just got a uh, accreditation for something. Or again, it could be a change in your operation. Maybe now you're open on Saturdays um, where you used to be open during the week. You might have evening hours. You might have a new drive through service, especially with COVID-19. Now, a lot of press releases are going out about how their business is changing based on uh, the rules and regulations that are out there at this time. So I just want to review a little bit about your press releases and how you format them, how you set them up. Um, some people had it perfectly right based on some of the stuff that I gave out. A couple of people were missing a couple of parts. So I want to review that really quick. I hope when I return the press releases to you, um, you saw what notes uh, I made and what changes I made. And I hope that made sense to you. Um, I'll go over this a little bit more again. And we'll also put a number of examples underneath this presentation for you to follow when you write another press release, which we're going to do for our next assignment. So remember, again, to add your contact information, either on top or on the bottom. Make sure you write a good headline. Make sure you add the date to when your release is going out, and it says for immediate release. Add your body, and if you need to, if your company, people might not know what your company is, or you're sending it farther away than your local area, put a boilerplate, which is a little summary of what your company is, like within a few sentences to a paragraph, if that makes sense. So here's an example of a press release, just basically how it might look. So make sure, again, your date's up there, your name, your title, your phone number for day and evening, uh, an email or a fax number if you need to have a, if anybody still faxes. And oddly enough, we find that some of our media does accept faxes still. 
Uh, make sure you put your immediate release up top, write your headline, and we'll talk about headlines a little bit. Um, you can see Wilkesbury PA is up there, so there's a place it's from. Now, if it's a really, you're sending it to, like LCC might send it to Times Later or Citizen Voice or WBRE, they know where we're at. So we, it's not necessarily a, we need to say where we're from. But if you're sending a little bit farther out regionally or statewide or even nationally, make sure you add your city in the beginning in the state so write your lead make sure it's a good lead uh, that's going to make people interested and we'll con continue reading further make sure you add your story with the details make sure who what where when why how is up as high as it can be we'll talk about that again in a second and make sure you end it with the three hashtags or your initials something to show that the story is over okay so make sure it's basically saying you know add these little hashtags on the bottom Use the inverted pyramid style. We talked about this uh, the, the uh, original class. Get your most important stuff up high. I noticed some people put like their date when we had the health sciences uh, open house. It's very important that people understand when it's gonna happen, where it's gonna happen, somewhere up top. So that way, if you lose interest halfway down, at least you know when and where it's gonna happen. So if there's stuff in the middle that I don't care about, I may stop reading and then all of a sudden not care, not know where, where or when it, it's going to be. So get your who, what, where, when, why, how, so up as high as you can. Within the first couple of sentences, make sure that the most important stuff is put out there and then sprinkle your details in afterward. Make Andy proud. <laughs> so basically, um, again, writing the news release, it's really important to think and write like a journalist. Okay. You are a third party person. You're covering an event. You're a journalist for your industry or whatever company you're working for. Write like a reporter. When you're even looking for stories and stuff like that, make sure the stories are newsworthy that a journalist would, would care about. Write according to the public or the writing style of the publication you're sending to. So pay attention to the, the uh uh, the publications, the websites, places that you're putting these stories out or you hope will run those stories, follow them, read them, look at them, see what they say and do, and follow that style. So read newspapers and magazine articles, The Weekender, anything you can that you think your company might benefit. It might be scientific journals even. And watch network TV channels, follow their style. And we'll talk a little bit later on um, in the next couple of classes or two about how to write for broadcast. Uh, but basically most of the normal uh, or the TV stations around basically will take our press release and write it in their own format. Um, they're a little bit of a different animal, but uh, feel free to write a press release in a style made for a, a TV or a radio station. Okay, again. Put your address up there and your name and your title, okay? Make sure it's somewhere that they can see it. Most people put them up in the beginning in the upper or left-hand corner. Some add them at the end. That depends. Again, follow what that media person needs so or that media uh, uses. So if they like it in the bottom or the end, great. They just want to be able to reach out to you if they need to reach out to you. Make sure your phone number is day or evening so that um, they can reach you after hours if need be. Okay, we talked about writing the headline for your news release. Make sure this is really important. Um, it's got to be attention getting. It can't be too confusing. Not like the bottom two there, but more like the one on the right there. Um, remember again with your headline uh, for newspapers and, and, and magazines, things like that, um, really important, make sure it, it works well with the story and it tracks you to read on. Um, also, if it's going to become an online story or you want to make sure that certain things in your headline match the keywords that somebody might actually um, do a search engine for. So if I'm searching for something that, that um, is related to your headline, make sure those keywords are in your headline. And a couple of good examples. Again, we talked about some of these before. Contacts replace digital camcorders. Computer chip eats your pain away. It's a pain eater's chip. Uh, cholesterol drug may undo heart disease. Important to anybody who has that. Again, think of who your audience is. 
Doing their homework, almost 14 million Americans now telecommuting. Well, guess what? A lot more doing that now uh, with the virus going on. So that's going to be a, a headline that people care about. Doggy dwellings, dog lovers make the family home more pet friendly. Make it interesting. Make it something that people are going to or read through. And a couple of key points with your press release. No matter the reason you're writing the release, it's important to remember it should look and read like a professional document. Use good grammar, good spelling, formatting. Um, it's important to write in a professional tone that journalists won't see as biased. They're not going to see it. You don't want it to sound like an advertisement. Um, avoid using exaggerated claims about your products and services. No exclamation points. We saw a couple of those in the original, um, a couple of those in the original releases that were sent. Do not use exclamation points. You are not shouting at people. You are a reporter. Okay. Avoid things like uh, the best, the easiest, the most luxurious, and so on. Those kind of uh, statements communicate bias and kind of a turnoff for journalists who basically want to determine for themselves the value of the product or service. Make sure you're not putting words in their mouth. You're not promoting something. The only way you can say something like that is if uh, um, you have it being as a part of a quote for somebody. But instead of saying things like the product is the easiest thing for consumers to use, say the product is designed with ease of use in mind. Okay? Don't make it sound like an advertisement. That's really important. Make sure you add quotes, add interest and authority to your news release. Quotes are important, especially when reporters can't maybe get that quote. Um, either they don't have time or they weren't at the event or something like that. You're giving them something they can use. And again, it gives some authority to it. Have your president, your CEO, your spokesperson, your customers, your doctors, and then we can lend a touch of authority, or belief, or humanity to your story. So it's basically gives it a little bit of a sense that it's not sounding like a used car salesman giving the story. Somebody else is telling the story or giving some credence to what you're saying, if that makes sense. So you want it believable. You want your story to be believable. So you're having somebody who's a, a larger than life or ahead of something basically saying, yes, that's true. <laughs> and they may call you anyway for a quote or an attribution. You can feel free to, to have them interview some. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense with press release writing and formatting. I'm going to leave a lot of examples and links underneath also to uh, just just help with putting that together and understanding how that's written. Okay, I want to talk a little bit quickly about online newsrooms. So once you create all these press releases and you're trying to get those out to people, and again, you might be emailing them, faxing them, mailing them, dropping them off, whatever, to get to the media to cover that stuff. Sometimes you need the media to come to you or want to come to you to get some of that information directly. So what you're going to do is create an online newsroom somewhere on your website that basically puts out all your news stories. It's basically the media's front door to your company. It's where they go to get information. Great way to get some stuff immediately to disseminate information to the media instead of trying to attach files and send them through the email or um, FTP things, which you know sometimes takes a little bit of time. They can come to you and get everything they need, hopefully, and may not even ask you any questions. You can provide them with multimedia messages and any other information. That Some examples could be streaming video or audio presentations, um, interviews, feature stories, webcasts you might want to do. Uh, webinars, blogs, anything like that. You can stream some of these presentations that the media can watch or view. They can download it or pull some information from them. So maybe they don't have time to drive out to your organization or your company or your event. They can watch it in real time and report it that way. Um, it's also a great place to put printable things that the media might want. So your news release can be there that they can print out or copy and paste. Uh, white papers or backgrounders are basically background information on the product or whatever it is you're, you're promoting. Um, just get some history of how your event or your product came to be. Uh, you might put up articles from other places that have been written about whatever you're promoting. 
annual reports that you might have, magazine articles um, from other places that have told about how great your product or whatever you give away might be. And again, photographs and video is a great place to download. Things to include in your online newsroom, contact information, very important. How do I reach you? And there should be links there that you can immediately email or call you from. All your media releases, or your press releases can be there. Your photos or executive photos even of, of uh, CEOs or presidents if they need a, a, a photo right away. Pictures of your products um, or your places of, of business. Um, charts, graphs, anything like that that shows your progress or numbers and statistics. Again, it's a background in the history of your organization, facts and figures, any stats, numbers that you want to promote or put out there, uh, demonstrations of your product, something showing how something how your product is de is designed to work, um, so they can maybe see how it operates or how it might operate. Put a search tool so that the reporters can find what they're looking for, and reports, financial information. Um, Video content is really important too. They might want some background video. I might want to see what my campus looks like. I want to might see where, um, you know, some of our nurses working in a lab, that kind of thing. Uh, biographies of, of any people we're talking about, speeches that they've given. Uh, maybe they gave a speech, but maybe they watch a speech, but maybe want the um, printed transcript of that speech. Well, here it is. They can take it and quote from it if they want to. And the awards we've re received, and again, streaming media, press conferences, we just talked about before, it's a great way for them to watch something happening live. So make sure those, uh, if you're streaming something, make sure it's working, it's legible, people can understand it, um, and the media can, has access to watch it in, um, easily. A couple of surveys that were done on online newsrooms um, with journalists in mind. 93% visit them on a regular basis. 29% visit almost every day. 79% visit um, newsrooms from small and medium-sized organizations all the way to giant corporations. 100% believe that it's important to be able to access PR contacts. So make sure again you have those contacts up on your on your on your website. 88% believe it's important to access your history, your background information, your awards, your your papers within the digital newsroom. 79% say they like video files, and 25% of them think it's very important you have video files up there. Again, news media, especially TV, need to show something. They need to have video, and they may not be able to access that video right away. And 82% believe links to your social media profiles are important. So make sure, again, you have all your social media files there, anything that you want people to link to. And our next lecture will actually be about social media. So we'll explain how your social media sites can provide journalists and, and consumers with a lot of information uh, that can generate stories. A couple of things about online newsrooms, things to do. Keep it simple. Don't put a lot of stuff in there. Don't put a lot of too many images or uh, crazy animations. Make sure the resolution of their photos are good. And they're high res, so when they reprint them again, um, they won't be bit uh, bitmapped and, and, and poor resolution. Uh, make sure there's a link back to your homepage, so if they want more information on your website, they can get back to your regular website. Um, make sure your viewers understand that this is a newsroom designed for the media. Um, provide a link to your consumer frequently asked questions, because they might want to learn a little bit more about what consumers are asking about your company. And give them a space where if they want to add their email to keep up with your news stories, that they can. So it's a great way to basically keep giving them almost a, a way to send press releases or an updated contact information for them. Things you don't want to do, don't force them to register for access information. So don't make them put up a username and password to get it. That's a little bit crazy. Don't wait for your IT or computer people to post the news. Try to find a way to do it yourself. And IT can help you with that. There's something called content management, where you can upload all your news stories right from your, your desk. 
So it goes up immediately and you have control over when and how that's presented um, on your site. Don't forget to include your media contact information. Uh, make sure not to use software animation that might not be compatible with uh, reporters uh, such as Flash or heavy JavaScript, things like that. Uh, if they have trouble seeing your website because you've got all sorts of weird stuff on there that their browsers can can handle, uh, try to avoid that. And don't design the site yourself if you're not good at designing websites. Let somebody do that for you or somebody in IT or a professional whose job it is to do that kind of thing. So when you say what is news or newsworthy, what are the values that the media care about that they're willing to a put it in the newspaper, um, make it part of their blog, put it on TV for the five o'clock, six o'clock, 11 o'clock news, or make their headline story, okay? So what are the things that the media cares about? So basically put yourself in an editor's position. If I'm the editor of a media outlet and I'm trying to determine what is interesting to the public that I reach out to, that I work with. Who's my audience? What do they care about? What do they think is newsworthy? Will your release or the information you're giving to the media be interesting to people outside of your company? And is it interesting to the audience I'm trying to? Remember, your organization's values are never important to news people. Traditional news values are. So when you craft a release, determine if any of the following values apply to the information you wish to send to the media. So remember, when you're crafting information up, think of these specific values that the media cares about and see how your release or your news story matches up to that. Impact. Ask yourself how many people will be affected by this information. Is it just going to be a small group of people? Is it going to be the whole area? Is it going to be people outside of this area? Um, how much reach does this actually have? So a couple of examples would be a, a tax increase. That's important. That's going to affect a lot of people. Increasing the cost of gasoline will affect a lot of people. A new state budget will affect a lot of people in our state. Uh, this happened to me at the Red Cross. When the blood supply is dangerously low, like it is right now, not having blood supply can mean people could die. That's important. That's got impact to a lot of people. Expanding a local hospital is important. A hurricane or some natural disaster will have an effect on a large amount of people in one area. So when you're putting your story together, try to figure out who and how many people will be affected by what you have to say. That's important. Now, impact could also be small if the media you're dealing with is small. So uh, Pittston, for example, has a newspaper there. That's just for Pittston. I actually have two weekly newspapers. Um, so anything that happens in Pittston um, is important to that will have impact on those people in Pittston. So if you have a news story that's going to affect somebody or a largest group of people in the city of Pittston, like when we moved, a, um, offered uh, to put a center uh, in the city of Pittston. So now we offer classes there. That affected those people in Pittston and the P Pittston media covered that because it impacted a large percentage of the people in their area. So think of how your story is going to impact the most amount of people when it's presented. Timeliness is also important. How long ago did the event happen? When will the event happen? What else is going on now that makes this significant? And after a day or a day and a half or so, sometimes it's no longer news. It may not be as important because other people may have covered it already. So timing is extremely important. It might be the time of the year. It might be something going on that particular day or something going on across the world right now that you want to take advantage of. When your earnings report comes out, that's important. That's the timing thing. Uh, here's our numbers. Here's what they are right now. People are going to cover it right now. Holidays like Christmas and Thanksgiving, your top 10 list is important. Top 10 toy list, I'm sorry, is important at Christmas time, not in August or September. Um, 
Butterball Turkey actually has a 1-800 number. You can call them during Thanksgiving if you have questions about your turkey. If you're not sure how it's cooking right or if it's defrosting correctly, or if you're using the right ingredients, there's literally people there at the Butter uh, Butterball Company that will talk you through it. Um, tourism in Ireland escalated after the Star Wars movie. So in the second and third movie, there was an island that you saw that Luke Skywalker was on that um, Ray went to to go visit. A uh, weird shaped island in the middle of the water. Um, a lot of steps to climb up. That's an actual island. It's called Skellig Island and it's outside of Ireland. It's an old um, monastery that's on top of it. So all those stairs you saw on there, um, on the island that she had to walk to get to the top to meet Luke, that's all there. That was a real place. Um, so after that movie came out, or those movies came out, people were flocking to Ireland to go to this Skellig Island. Same with Lord of, Re Lord of the Rings. A lot of the scenery in there, the mountainscapes and things like that, were actually in New Zealand. And so the New Zealand um, uh, tourism shot up because of that. Look at The Office. The Office TV show is supposed to be based in Scranton, PA. So now Scranton, PA is on the map. <laughs> Not that a thousand people were coming to Scranton to go see it, but you know we sold artifacts and stuff for people who did come here that they wanted to buy. You buy mugs and office stuff like that uh, up at the East Team Town Mall. Nurses Week is every May, uh, first week of May, uh, in celebration of Florence Nightingale's um, um, Nightingale's I'm sorry um, birthday, and so we try to use that time to promote our nursing program to say thank you to nurses out there in the area to put up some billboards saying happy nurses week um walk of honor we have across the street from the atc that's a memorial to fallen first responders firefighters police officers that kind of thing every 9 11 uh, we do a ceremony there uh, we have an artifact from the world trade center and when we have that ceremony it's it's very we get a lot of um very professional very regal uh, a lot of speakers a lot of stories are being told um there's a ceremonial bell that's rung the firefighter trucks are there there's flags being raised bagpipes perfect for the media to cover a lot of visual items there a lot of um video that they can shoot there's a lot of stories to be told um and it makes for good media stories and they usually cover that every every year uh, earth day or any other day um, you can always come up with different stories or things to write about i subscribe to that um, weird holidays or days of the year which provide all sorts of weird um, named days such as like chocolate chip cookie day or uh, donut day or hug a friend day or uh, man's best friend day or something like that um all these weird events are days that are designed to attract attention to something and if you could tie your organization into that like if it's chocolate cake day um we always put up a recipe from our culinary department of a chocolate cake recipe that people can watch follow and and download so anytime you can kind of tie into those weird days of the year that's a great way to show timeliness. Um, prominence is another thing. Um, anybody that's prominent people, even those doing trivial things are the, are, are the news. Um, they could be politicians, celebrities, um, sports figures, all the way to CEOs and organizations like Exxon, Walmart, Nike, um, things like that. Anywhere there's a prominent person that's involved, if you have them as part of your news release or event or whatever, the media will cover them. Remember we talked about ribbon cuttings and stuff like that. We always wanted to have the mayor there or a legislator there or your president of your organization or, or CEO at that event. They're prominent people. If you can get a celebrity there, even greater. <laughs> You'll get more news coverage. So a couple of examples might be a presidential con candidate or nominee can visit the area. Um, that'll bring a lot of attention. 
Uh, Kim Kardashian a couple of years ago just got, got robbed. Almost anything Kim Kardashian or her family does winds up being news for some reason. Because she's a celebrity, she's an influencer, a lot of people pay attention to her brand and what they do. Um, Yudichik, one of our local um, politicians, had a, a veterans ceremony at our Walk of Honor. So basically he was giving out ribbons to um, honor Vietnam veterans. So the media came and covered that. It was very touching. It was very uh, picturesque. Um, and again, you had a, a fairly well-known politician helping veterans in our community. So again, if you have a celebrity show up for an event, a politician show up for an event, that will bring news. Even our graduation speaker, depending on how popular they are, or newsworthy they are, the media will ask to interview that person. And they might become the center of your graduation story. Um, we've had politicians come to that. We've had some couple celebrities show up for those. Um, we've had people who've survived um, major um, injuries from the Iraq war. Um, any kind of a, a good story or a prominent person will get attention from the media and they will cover your event. Proximity, how close things are, are really important. So news that happens locally, more people pay attention to than things that are farther away. Um, if there's a, you know, a, a, a robbery or something in Bosnia, we don't care so much about that kind of thing. But we will care if it happened on the street next to ours or in the next town next to ours. Um, so we care more about things that are really close to, to us. So if we can, A, if it's a local thing that we can really promote, the media will cover that. If it's a international national story that we can kind of bring locally, like a, a veteran coming back from the war comes back home to meet his family. That's a, a story about you know, the war going on and here's our soldier came back to our hometown again. That, that's the type of story that goes on. So for le, re, le, local red legislators say something bad about the budget, the rip it apart, um, that's bringing it together, a local view of something that's going on on a statewide level. Um, there was a one of our faculty members, Jim Gavanis, um, he took a picture of a famous blues man um, that was going to be featured at the Grammy Awards, who had just passed away. And his photograph was going to be in the show. And we sent up some releases and stuff saying, hey, by the way, they're going to talk about one of our professor's photographs being used at a, a national international basically TV show and we got a lot of good co press coverage of of him watching the Grammys and telling the story of why how we took the photo and a little bit of a biography that the, the gentleman that, that passed away okay so again even things like our uh, roundabouts that were being put in the expressway coming into the campus that was a good local story that was happening nearby again if something happens in Luzerne County, people in Lackawanna County, the media there, aren't going to cover it or don't seem as it's that important unless it has effect on them. And even with our graduation class, we have to say the names of the local towns that our uh, graduates are from. So when we send it out to Berwick or Bloomsburg, like the Press Enterprise newspaper, we're only giving them the list with people from that area because that's the ones they will publish. Um, locally, we put them all in, but when they go out to the smaller towns or farther away, we break that list down to smaller groups of people based on the areas that they're living in. Another key value that I really like are the unusual and bizarre stories. The out of the ordinary stories that generate some kind of an interest. Do you ever look at those hyperlinks that have some weird, crazy, headline or title that you just have to watch or click on to learn more about. Um, those are the kind of stories that people tend to flock to also. And the media tends to care about them because they're different. So there's a duct tape company that basically sponsors a prom dress fashion show. And you can, you can Google that and find out what those look like. But they're prom outfits made out of duct tape. The more creative you get and the more interesting you get and you have to tell how many rolls you made and how many colors you used. And you can actually win a $10,000 scholarship if you win first place on that. 
Uh, the world's largest Hershey Kiss is an example. You make something that's the world's largest anything, that tends to be a news story. If you go to Easton, PA, you can visit the um, world's largest crayon locally at the um, Crayola factory there. Taco Bell uh, had a satellite job a couple many years ago. Uh, the satellite Russian satellite Mir was going to fall out of orbit and land somewhere in the world. And Taco Bell thought it would be a great idea if they could make a giant target. And they actually floated it in the, I believe, the Atlantic Ocean, if I'm correct, because they figured most of the world is covered by water. There's more chance of it landing in the ocean. And they said if any part of Mir actually falls on that target, everybody in the United States will get a free taco. Did it happen? No, but the story generated a lot of uh, interest amongst uh, media across the country. Doggy beauty contest for the SPCA. Um, this is something that actually happened many times, and it was a way to generate um, media for the SPCA and, and what's going on there. So you brought your dogs in and dressed them up, and they actually had a contest, a beauty contest. An interesting tie into that is they took a local radio host who always talked about her dog on the show and made her one of the judges. Uh, that causes interest where the media person now will spend most of her time talking about her being at this event. So it's free publicity for you at the SPCA and we'll get more interest in the doggy beauty contest. Google toilet paper wedding. You'll find some really interesting dresses and outfits made out of toilet paper. Charmin does a lot of contests like that to, um, they give like free um, honeymoons and things like that. If you will make your wedding dress out of toilet paper. Uh, there's a couple of really neat examples of that. Uh, I, if I can find the clips, I'll put them in the links at the end also. You can also Google the words pizza robot and see what pops out of there. Basically, there's a, a company that makes pizzas using only robots. Unusual, weird, but it, it literally makes the, the pizza from scratch up until putting it in the box and delivering it. Unusual, bizarre stories generate attention. Of course, we also like conflict and progress as two other values that the media care about. So when you get two or more groups that have different points of view or are fighting, that makes for a good valued news story. Media likes it when people fight. So when there's a teacher strike, that's huge. Um, teachers will basically be out there fighting to say, hey, we don't get paid enough. They want us to pay into our health insurance so we can't afford that. It's a lot of work that we do and it's not fair. And they're just greedy. Then they go to administration, the schools themselves and ask them, well, what do you think about this strike? Well, the teachers are greedy. They're asking for too much money. We don't have that kind of money. We have to raise people's taxes, and the people don't want their taxes raised anymore. And plus, other businesses and industries basically pay into their health insurance. Why can't teachers? So then they go to the teachers and say, hey, the administration's saying this. What's your response? Well, that builds up a nice fight that will go on for a couple of cycles, news cycles that go through. Um, you want to try to avoid conflict whenever you can. Um, gun control, abortion, anything like that that can create a different point of view that people could fight on, uh, the media likes to cover. Progress also, when something new comes that improves your way of life, that's always an important news story. So when the Mohican Sun Arena came into the area and brought all those businesses in and we're all of a sudden going to get all these great shows and events, fantastic. The media covered that. Um, a news story where you find out a product does something beneficial like coffee now is great for antioxidants. When new business or industry moves in the area and they're going to bring a lot of jobs to the area, that is progress. That's showing something that's good that's happening to the community and will affect a lot of people. Disaster, fires, floods, car crashes, hurricanes, tornadoes, bombings, viruses, all these things tend to be newsworthy. And they can take whatever you had or thought was important and might be running in the news the next day and throw it out the window. Uh, nine, things like 9-11 disrupted a lot of events. The virus 
coronavirus we're dealing with right now disrupted a lot of things that people had planned. We had an open house coming up. That's not going to happen anymore. Um, we had a number of uh, events that we're going to do with alumni. Uh, all those events were shut down and canceled. So disaster may have a major effect on your organization because it's a huge news value for the media. Okay. Um, you might have heard the phrase, if it bleeds, it leads. Well, that's often the case. So if there's a car crash on 81, um, that's going to disrupt traffic for a lot of people. So that's going to be a news value that's going to have an impact on a lot of people. We had a situation in the while ago where a student brought a gun to campus. So um, that become a, became a huge news story that we didn't really want, but happened. A student, a nursing student, brought a gun on campus. He had it just in his pocket, forgot he had it in there. A student saw it kind of hanging out. He left and called security. Security escort, escorted him off the campus, and the kid said he wasn't intending to do anything with it. He just forgot he had it in his pocket. Still a violation, still got pictures on the front page of the newspaper and some video clips from the local media. Um, hurricanes, floodings, disasters, anything like that will bring uh, destruction will have an impact on a large group of people. Uh, if you remember back in September 2011, uh, there was a giant flood that hit the area. We had a, a lot of rain, uh, flooded most of Pittston, a lot of portions of um, northeast Pennsylvania, uh, disrupted a lot of events. One of them was um, the Bloomsburg Fair for the first time in its history was canceled. Um, and the Bloomsburg Fair brings a lot of money to local people. Some of them make almost their entire profit during that one week of time that the fair runs. And most people that go to the fair like the food. They go for those weird, bizarre, chocolate-covered this or deep-fried that <laughs> that people just find delicious or unique. So one of the things that was interesting during that flood was... Um, the main road to get in the Bloomsburg wasn't really affected, that Route 11. A lot of businesses along Route 11 uh, to get there. So what a lot of them did was open up their space on, on their properties for these food trucks to park. And then so people could drive up Route 11, get out of their vehicle and enjoy the food vehicles or food trucks or whatever. And that was great business for them. They stayed alive. Um, they helped the other companies that they were letting these food trucks park because it brought people to their businesses. And the media covered all of that. So while um, John's chocolate covered taco truck uh, was at um, Dennis's used car sales lot, well, people were buying their chocolate covered taco and then looking at cars. And the media was covering the car lot and the taco truck, interviewing both of them and giving them plugs on air. So that's somehow a disaster you can turn into kind of good PR. Um, I remember even after September 11, we donated a whole bunch of um, chairs and desks to uh, a community college out in uh, New York City that was affected by the disaster. Um, even just recently with the virus, we donated um, a lot of our PPE, protective equipment and ventilators to the area hospitals. So again, using a disaster almost and helps us to generate some, some, by doing something good, gave us some positive PR out of the deal. And finally, human interest is extremely, extremely important. People like to read about other people or, or watch other people. Take reality shows, for example. We care about what other people do and what their lives are like and, and, and their stories. We all have a story to tell. And... Uh, it might be somebody who's very similar to us. We, sometimes we just need validation that the things we're doing are make sense or are normal. We also like to hear about people doing extraordinary things like celebrities and, and, and living lives that we may or may not always get to see. Um, one of the interesting things when I was with the Red Cross, we had a four-year-old girl. Uh, she was a blood recipient, uh, needed blood transfusions every month because she had a disease called, I believe it's called thalassemia. And I would take her and her mom to a couple of blood drives and um, they'd walk around and, and she we tell her story and she would thank all the donors there uh, because every month 
she needs a blood transfusion that she has to drive out the her mom has to drive her out to Bloomsburg uh, near the every three weeks she's fine and then the fourth week she starts to get really tired and listless and not feeling well her mom who's a single mom has to drive her from Wilkesbury to Bloomsburg to the Geisinger Hospital so she can get a total blood transfusion which takes almost all day to do and she's gonna need that every month for the rest of her life and this this girl is, is adorably cute would walk up to people like I said and just thank them and that just made everybody feel important at that event and, and kept them coming um, story you can probably read about anything in orange too is, is clickable you can find on online an officer in uh, San Francisco Golden Gate Bridge has stopped like several hundred suicides and he told his story about what he does and how he does it um, and that's interesting to people um, uh, two years ago we had a 84 year old guy graduate from LCC that's uh, he was uh, just taking some computer classes every year and somebody finally approached him and said you know you're close to actually finishing a degree and he said oh okay and he took a couple more classes and uh, finished his degree and he graduated this 84 year old guy and he said he's still gonna come back and keep going because he was interested in cyber security because his son did it um, that made for a great human interest story any local companies that are, are family owned have a story to tell um, Stookie's barbecue across the bridge from Nanny Coke is closing that family has been doing or had that business for many years um, and you know they're telling the story of how they started it what they do the, the customers all know them people like to hear these kind of stories they want to know about people and understand how they got to where they they got to so those are the news values that are important to the media and you can create other things also that are to create news that are important to the media event situations what we call the pseudo event which really don't always do a lot but they can kind of generate press coverage you know a special event like an open house or a celebration or an anniversary a contest that you might be holding a top 10 list that you put out there polls surveys that you have results for that maybe might be interesting in the media a product demonstration of something new or innovative uh, PR stunts which you guys talked about in the first um, uh, um, assignment that we did rallies and protests anything that goes on in public square or events or walks or runs and personal appearances by celebrities or people will get people to come out so those are just different ways that we as PR professionals try to get the media's attention and the public's attention to something we put out there uh, a couple of pictures I'll just end with with um, you know the world's largest Hershey kiss um, speaking of kissing that's Madonna and um, Britney Spears kissing at the MTV Awards generated front page stories on some of these magazines the Wiener Oscar Mayer Wiener mobile which you may or may not have seen or blimps that fly into the area um, all these people have PR teams that go out ahead of time to kind of tell them they're they're on their way and they show up at events that get their picture taken or you can sit in front of it and get your picture taken with the Wiener mobile that's Tiger Woods hitting um, a golf ball from one country to another across the bridge and uh the p diddy i believe voter die campaign he did a couple of years ago um all these things are designed or pr stunts designed to get the media's attention so that's in a nutshell a little bit about how press releases and press events um are used to get the media's attention so when the media covers it it's deemed newsworthy enough uh, as long as your your press release is a newsworthy story and follows the values that the media care about you're good you got a better chance of getting it to run um, in in whatever media you you put out for so think of those things when you're putting your campaigns together your stories and, and, and events like that I'll try to include um, a couple links underneath for the online newsrooms also so go visit those they're really interesting to see I'll put some examples of news release writing underneath also um, and feel free to visit keep keep going on the CNN Fox Drudge um, citizen voice Times leader New York Times all these news organizations 
see what they're covering watch this the headlines see how the styles they are they write even things like uh, the rolling stone or a uh, weekender magazine um discover nepa watch how they do all this stuff follow their examples and then you could get a feel for how to write for these publications these websites find blogs out there um there's a lot of different ways we could reach out to the public, find out what your public's interested in, and get those stories out there. Okay?